up in front of my right leg a little bit and go for just a little bit of angle yeah. as if it's shoulder in but not like in any way that would yeah. block him yeah and then the same thing can I move you up in front of it and then and then add a canter and throw in a change and yeah you know but not in a way that he feels okay now I'm constrained and blocked yeah just like one piece at a time yeah very individual aids okay, okay. try that but the tempo is good. And, and the other thing I said, and I don't know if you heard me, but one of the issues that you have to watch out for is the tendency to want to run him off of his feet because of the fact that he's a little bit behind the leg. Okay. So just, just your tempo is very good. If you were to go quicker, then you'll tend to make him uh, tighter. Well, and I feel that very much the balance is a big issue with yeah. him. Yeah. So pick up where you left off because it was looking very positive. I just said pick up where you left off because it was looking very positive. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Great. So you might have to regroup again. So just, yeah, just take, be patient. Take it from behind. Start from behind. When he makes himself rigid in front, say, oh, I'm not dealing with your front end. You know, I'm going to stay on your hind end. I'm going to ride your hind end. Because you know eventually his head will fall into your hand. Exactly. Right. But stick on, stick with the hind legs when he's difficult in front. Yeah, and just if he's bracy and difficult in your hand, don't get stuck on him there. Just kind of ignore him and move him off your leg. Tap him with a whip. Yeah, move him off your leg. He's kind of distracted now. We gotta get him back into the zone. Tap, 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 off the leg. Tap, 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 off the leg. the blood moving to the, all the right places. You're doing a good job. A little tiny shoulder in in there just because you want to start introducing that exercise, that element, and making sure that you can ask for that shape without him shutting down or backing off. Yeah. A little more angle. Yeah, ask for it. Yeah, say, yeah. Just make sure he's, it's available. Yep, he's gotta be, make sure that he doesn't slow down when you ask for that shoulder in and that he doesn't lean on that right leg. Uh, try that again and just focus on that one thing, getting him really active and up in front of your right leg with a tiny angle. A little more angle, a little more, yeah, that's it. Good job with your tempo, feel the difference? Super, super. And then the, the next thing to do would be to make sure he's supple on that left rein. So do that again, coming down towards me. So get a little angle. I like the tempo. Fabulous. Little angle. And now flex left just a teeny bit, just to make sure he's staying loose and without letting him back off. You see, that's a place where he'd shut down, right? Yes. Yeah, good. Try that again and see if that left rein can come through when the right hind is under and that he doesn't shut down, back off, or freeze or anything like that. That you can get angle and that you can get that left rein supple. Yeah, good. That's it. Good and then change direction, give him a little pet there. That's all you want. You tell him you don't want more. And then change direction, the same thing the other way. Yep, terrific, you got tons of hind leg. Now this side's a little stickier, isn't it? Yeah. So maybe less angle and just concentrate on that left hind. Yeah. So try a little shoulder in left, up in front of your left leg. Don't let that left hind slow down. Good. Yeah, just ask for shoulder in anyway. Just because he's sticky, don't let that cause you to be incapacitated. Really good. Pat him. You just keep riding. And again, angle. Left hind. Left hind. Angle. Yeah, good. Good. There you go. Yeah, and just don't let that left hind slow down. Only the left. Focus only. Say, I just need that. That one thing. Just this, just this, quick, quick, quick. Yeah, that's right, tap, tap, tap. 
one more time and then just gently supple that right rein through and make sure that he can do that, that he can be quick in front of your left leg and easy and responsive to that right rein. Terrific, terrific, quick, quick, quick. Now do a serpentine, maybe four loops and just changing direction between the two sides and trying to make them more equal, trying to make both sides more similar. So little loops, lots of turns so that he has to be really supple and you just have to maybe go behind Jennifer, go behind Jennifer, try to go behind. Okay, yeah, that's another option. Whenever you're in a warm up arena situation, and this is, always choose the path behind the oncoming traffic so that you're not trying to gauge each other's speed and you're trying to do a get in front of them. Good, and loop this way. Good, and just comparing the difference, see how much access you have, keep turning, make it a small loop and then try to get this left side as supple and through as the right side is. Work on that piece. Good job. That's better. And then to the right. Get that piece as supple as through. Good. You're gonna do one more serpentine like that and then we'll take a walk break, okay? Yeah. Good. Very good. That's improving. So the right side turning and add a little shoulder in just to add sophistication to this. In front of your leg, exactly. Now a little shoulder and left. Can okay. you just do the loop again? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So per, and expect him, like anticipate that he's going to do that when you put those aids on. He feels you put a more difficult aid on and he's going to go, oh, I don't want to go into it. So you've got to practice, expect him to suck back and work through that. Exactly, now, now the other way. Expect that he's going to suck back and deal with that. Good. Ex now turn right. It doesn't have to be perfect. He just has to be movable. Yeah, exactly. I don't expect him to be perfect. Keep turning. Keep asking him to move through that. Stay soft with your hands. Good for you. And then the same thing to the left. Good. And I love the fact that you're not taking the bait. You know, when he sticks his head up and comes off the bit, that you're not buying that. Down the next long side and ask for a little lengthening stride and trot. Just lengthening. Make him move. Make him go. Don't worry about that left rein. Don't get hung up on it. Get him quick. Quick, 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 quick. Do a circle, 20 meter circle left. We're gonna get this left side a little more bending, a little more supple. Play with the left side, but keep the hind legs moving like that. Left jowl softer, wiggle the left rein, bend the little left rib cage. He's a little stiff on this left side, and yeah. And that's plenty, that's plenty, super, pet him. One more circle, and then we'll, we'll stop. But get this left side one more time like you just did. Get him to yield, to give, to soften up, and to push his body over to your right rein. Left leg, push his body over to that right rein. Yes. And then let him stretch down through that shape. Let him stretch down through that give. Keep him in front of your left leg. Tap him. Over to the right. Leg yield him over to your right rein. Leg yield him over to that right rein. Flex him left. And make him stretch down onto your right rein. Yeah. 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 Hind legs. Hind legs. Hind legs. Hind legs. Tap him. Tap him. Tap him. Tap him. We're almost done. We're almost there. I just... I don't want him to quit. He need you give and he's got a release to that. Again, off your left leg, over to the right rein and down through that slot. Good boy. And then you can walk down through that slot, over the back. Good, good, good. Over to that right rein, over to that right rein. Good for you. Right hand low and still. Yes, you want that right hand like that, because it's beautiful, because that's where you're receiving him. And now, just let him kind of swing and stretch, and let, I want him to feel good here. I want him to realize it's worth it to go here. So he's less, spending less energy avoiding this spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, it's not so bad. Good boy. And, and, and all the way down. See if he should be able to stretch all the way down. He can go lower than that. Change direction. I'm just curious. I know I said I was going to have you walk, but I just want to see if he'll stretch the other way. All the way down. Good boy. Think of his nostrils going towards his toes. Good boy.
Okay, and you can walk in that shape right in there. Good. Yeah, okay. Long rain and pet him, let him catch his breath. So it's the, what, I, what we're not sure about yet is what exactly is blocking him on the left side. We don't know if it's that he doesn't want to stand up on the right hind, which is causing him to fall into your left leg and, and his left shoulder kind of fall into your left rein, or if he's quite tight on the left side or what exactly it is, but we're just gonna work our way into it. And so we, what we need to do is we need to get the left hind quicker. We need to get his left ribs more yielding. We need to push his shoulder out to the right more. Okay, and get him to stand up in that right rein better when you're going to the left. Yes, I feel what he's doing going to the left is collapsing his right shoulder, drifting out with yeah. the right shoulder so yeah. that it's not underneath him. Yeah. <coughs> but the good thing I think is that before it was the other rein. Yeah. And so I'm choosing to see it as a Positive, absolutely. Rather than a negative. Yeah, oh sure, when they switch sides, that's a great sign. That's and a really the good other sign. thing I feel is that I've still, I've got a lot more horse than I had before. Good. Which is, um, Elisa has something to channel, right? Well, even this walk, like look at this nice active energetic walk that you have yeah. right now. Yeah. I mean, that's a fantastic walk. So, you know, sometimes the real evidence is in the little places where you're not even really looking for it. And the other thing I find too, Sherry, is that being, learning dressage, like I started to learn dressage at the same time as I had a young horse. Yeah. And I don't really know what I'm going for. I know what feels good to yeah. me and what feels right to me. But, you know, anyone can tell me anything sometimes that I don't know. <laughs> so, I mean, I feel like his back legs are coming right underneath me and his back swinging. But, you know, as I say, I'm not, I don't, I feel a lot in my education. Yeah. Well, um, in the warm up in the trot, they were very nicely active underneath you. And um, and he was going at quite a nice pace. I just noticed that when you went when you changed directions from the right side to the left side, I just noticed that the the left everything was slower and more stuck looking on the left. Definitely. So we want to do frequent changes of direction to get him more supple and figure out how we can make both sides more similar to one another. Okay. We're gonna to try to get the left side to be more up to speed like the right. And when it's not, we need to be very good at analyzing what it is that's blocking it or causing it to not be. Um, and, and so we're, why don't we just dive right into that. But, but before we do, I wanna see the canter. I haven't seen the canter yet. And I wanna see the canter incorporated as part of the warm up. Do you want uh, the left or the right? Let's take a look at the right side first. Okay. And from walk or from trot? Um, I, whatever, it's fine. You can do it, whatever's best. If he's a little lazy and sucked back, you might want to do it from the trot so that you have a little more energy to get into that canter with. I find he comes through better from the walk, actually. Okay. That's a nice canter. Down the next long side towards me, just do a few circles, a few small circles. So small circle, I'm just gonna see how he turns. <laughs> yeah, try it again, so just go. Yeah, don't take the bait. Try not to take the bait, canter. That's right. So again, it's the kind of thing like, oh, you're gonna make me bend? No, so that might involve some work. Good for you. Good. Mischievous little thing. Pet him, because he made a nice choice. Reward for him being good boy. Does that feel pretty forward and pretty easy? Um, a little strong, a little like he wants it to be his pace. Yeah. Good for you. 
Again, he made some good choices. Pet him, well done. Better than last time. Now down the next long side, three 10 meter circles. So a 10, so a 10 meter circle between M and R, and then one at B, and then one at F if the coast is clear. Good, and then one more at B. We might not do the one down there. Good, that's better. Do another one at B, and turn. I love the 10 meter circles. Keep going, ride it through. Okay, super, transition to trot, good for you. Trot and then a little shoulder in right. Little shoulder in right. Get him off that right leg, up in front of your right leg. And then diagonal, and then the same thing with the canter the left side. And if he feels lazy in the canter left, Judy, do some medium and extended canter transitions, okay? If you have control, good. This, this is really nice and round. You feel how good that is? Yeah. Pet him. Now don't let him suck back. He's got to get up in front of you. Up in front of your left leg. And then when you're ready, canter. Yeah, and the same thing. Really going. When he feels really good, do some turns, some circles. Terrific. And going on, fine. Remember not to get hung up on his reins. Don't get stuck on his face. I feel like I'm getting stuck on the left rein. So you gotta give it, give it, and then take it. And turn, use this left rein. Turn, use your right rein to help you turn. Give the left rein. Don't rely on that left rein through that turn. Use your other aid, good. Pat him. And then supple on that left rein. And then another circle. I like the fact that you're not losing your gas here in the counter. Turn, take the left rein, play with his jaw, and then give it a little bit. Use your outside aids. Yeah, and a transition to trot, and then shoulder in left. And get off that left rein, good. Now bend him with the left rein, kick him with your left leg, half out with the right rein, give the left rein, give the left rein. Yeah, kick him with your left leg though. He's not, he's not bending around your left leg, which is why he gets stuck on your left rein. Yeah, a little half up on the right rein. Kick him up in front of your left leg. You may need to whip in your left hand. You'll have to see. I think you need your whip in your left hand. Get that left hind quicker so that he, he gets off your left rein. Good. Now, good. Now tap that left side. Good. Now get lighter on the left rein. Give that left rein. Say, I'm not going to hold more than a few ounces on this left rein. Tap him with the whip, though. Say, get up. And now give with your left hand. Good, and again, down the next long side. And your outside rein, the right rein is the one that says, this, I want you on the bit, okay? Not the inside rein right now. Yeah, tap, 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 make that left hand as active as possible. Tap, 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 left hand as quick as possible. Get a little more angle. And use the right rein to determine his roundness. Use the left rein just to loosen his jaw. Yeah, think about the, your, the left rein, you're just wiggling it out of his grip. Like tug the left rein like you would pull a bone out of a dog's teeth, okay? Tug on that left rein like you're trying to tug a bone out of, it, out of his grip. Yeah, tug it and give, tug it and give. But, but get, really get on his hind legs, like really get on his case behind because he's slow in the hind leg, which means he can't let go of the bone. Yeah, don't let those hind legs be slow. Tap, 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 fire them up. And then tug the bit out of his grip on the left side. Tug it out of his grip. Supple on the left. Say, no, you're not grabbing this rein. Good, 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 good. Fire up those hind legs. Fire them up. Come on, double time on the hind leg. Yes, good for you. Right rein keeps him round. And left rein, you tug that bone out of his teeth. Tug that bone out of his grip. Say, nope, you're not holding this bone. Yes, and give it. Yes and pet him on the left side. That's kind of the direction you need to go with that, okay? Now let's give him a little walk break. So I was really happy to see that left counter come through as well as it did. And his back feels so much better. Like it feels like he's connected from the back. Good, good, yeah, super. And it felt like he was actually coming through the shoulder in, not like just kind of being cautious. Yes. Yeah, not sucking back and then doing it behind you. Yeah, no, and that's because you were riding it very tactfully. Like if he feels you really box him in, he'll say, I'm not gonna go into that. Yeah. 
because I don't have to. <laughs> so you're riding always just, you're, you, you know that he's talented and so gifted in his body that you actually don't really have to box him in. Like if you had a long, poorly built horse, they need to be really compressed by the rider's aids, yeah. but he's already built, so engaged, so together, so uphill, yeah. that you don't have to box him in the way you would a less talented horse. In fact, you don't want to box him in because psychologically he gets into that mode and he says, I don't want that. Yeah. So you've got to be introducing everything in this, like, oh, I just want a little of this. Oh, I just want a little of just this one thing. You know, but then meanwhile, of course, you're tugging the left rein out of his grip and you're half halting on the right rein. <laughs> you know, you're doing a few more things, but never in a way that he feels that there's this whole constellation of aids occurring simultaneously. You're kind of like cooking like, oh, a dash of this, oh, a dash of that, blah, blah, blah. And he never feels that there's this whole collective group of things that are, are overpowering that he doesn't want to, you know, where he just says, I'm not going to deal with that. And I like the fact that in the canter, he kind of balked the first time and then he, he said, okay, I'll do it for you. You know, so, I mean, his basic nature is cooperative. It could have gone the other way. He could have said, you know, oh, Volte's in the canter? Forget about it. Yeah. You know, you're not going to do another one with me. And instead, he hitched up his britches and went on to do six and eight more. You know what I mean? So the basic attitude is pleasant. Like he, he asks you, that's sort of his way of doing a question mark. Must I? Must yeah. I, mommy? Must yeah. I really? Yeah. And you were very positive and you said yes. And he said, okay. So he's, his nature is fairly affable. Yeah. Well, also you don't feel like he can be cheeky, but you don't feel like he really means yeah. it. And yeah. that's one of the things I like about him is that for the amount of talent he has, I think Yeah. Because I, I want to push my envelope, but I can't do it if I feel the horse. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. But uh, he's been pretty good at me. All these horses coming and going. Yeah. And last night we came down and the, the ravens are in the, oh. the way building a nest. So are you guys stabled here tonight? Stabled here? No. We're, oh. we're going home tonight. Oh. Because we just live across the highway. Oh. But we come down here to school and Perfect. Caroline brings her mare and, nice. and I brought Cavallo and so her mare was way more reactive yeah, and Cavallo was just easy. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's got a good nature. Okay, terrific. So we're going to have some fun now. We're all warmed up. You got all the blood moving to the right places. So when you're ready, just picking up the reins and you're going to turn left at M and you're going to do a half pirouette. I've never done that. A half walk for wet. So a half turn on the haunches have you done? No. Okay, so turn on your line towards, um, let me think how the best way to introduce this. Have you done turn on the forehands? Yes. Okay. So the turn on the haunches is the opposite of the turn on the forehand in that he's going to rotate his forehand around his haunches. So what you basically would want to do is you're going to bring your outside leg back a little bit to hold the haunches where they are and ask the front end to turn around that. Okay. So the way it's normally written in the test is on one of these lines here, but that's a little bit more difficult. So why don't you just um, pick a small circle on the center line. From the left rein? Either one, we're gonna do both sides. So you just, okay. whichever one. And so just walk in a very small circle over the center line and we're going to start to push his haunches in. And so right leg can come way back and you're going to do, so this is like a canter pirouette, okay? Pretend you're riding canter pirouette, the haunches in, around your inside leg, smaller circle and your weight left, yes, exactly. Weight left on the left seat bone and push his hips in and make him more, yeah, good. Right leg further back, good. Good, and now his neck a little rounder, a little more half out on the outside rein. Keep those haunches in. Smaller steps now, slightly smaller steps. Good, that's it, make them round. Good, good, good. And there's your walk pirouette, okay? Just like a canter. Very simple, straightforward, very good. Make sure that your legs are alternating a little bit, that you say left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg. You don't just put your legs on and clamp them on, exactly. And a little more left flexion, Notice how he's wanting to dive down. Yeah. Do, 
So half fault, don't just hold him, half fault him. Yes, half fault him. And, and the brain's a little shorter and a little more bent. Yeah, and half fault there. And half fault and light. And half fault and light. Very good, and half fault and light. There you go, there's that left side coming through quite nicely. And if that, if he grabs onto the bone of the left rein like a Rottweiler, wiggle, yeah. wiggle it loose. Wiggle it, tug that bone loose of his jaw. Exactly, and then be soft. And pet him, long rein and pet him, very good. Okay, you can be proud of yourself. So if you've never done walk carrots before, obviously he has, because you wouldn't be doing them like that. Good boy. So he knows them, okay? Where did I, you find that out? I want you to be working with all of these more advanced movements so that when you go to work on a canter pirouette, it's already effortlessly understood at the walk, okay? okay. Same thing again, go to your circle this direction. You're going to put your weight in the right. You might want to have that whip in the outside, actually, because you're going to do walk pirouettes right now. So you'll need to reinforce your outside leg. If he's not listening to that left leg, you're not going to get a walk pirouette if he doesn't listen to it. So on the bit, on a circle, in a bend, with a nice left half halt, okay? And when you half halt, you should stand upright and perpendicular and responsive around your right leg. Yeah, little half halts. Make sure you love your right rein. Is that right rein supple? You might want to shorten it because it looks like it's back in your crotch. Get that right hand forward in front of you and up in front of you. Good, now start to push his haunches in more. Keep your weight to the right more. Stay soft with your reins. Stop, good, there you go. Sitting on that right seat bone. Standing down into that right seat bone and right stirrup, good, haunches in, good. Good, and soft hands. Flex and right, flex and right. Good, and soft. Yeah, he's, he knows canter pirouette is next, huh? That's next. Yeah, pet him. A little bit, but he needs, this is his yoga. He, he does feel harder for him because he keeps wriggling out of it. Soft hands, soft hands, just really soft. Pet him and yeah, not reins long, just don't brace against him. And haunches in a little more, do his yoga. Push his hips right, bend his body right. He's kind of contorting his body, good. And then soft hands and pet him and let him just feel that. Yeah, let him feel that shape. Very good. And, and the canter aid is very similar to that. So it's normal for him to think canter, okay? Terrific, pet him. So I want you to work on in your own. You should be doing always turn on the forehands. You should be doing um, Turn on the haunches, which is pirouettes. And what about your half pass? Do you work on your half pass? No, not much because, as you said, you shouldn't really be doing it before you have the long there and Yes, Although exactly. Exactly. And I've been doing, I've been doing it, and I think he's really getting it. Yes. Okay. But um, I don't want to push him into doing something that's going to make him suck back. Absolutely. Right? But I think you can get away with it at the walk. But we are going to leave it now because we're going to go on to some other things. And um, what I want you to do now for fun is make him a little bit more supple here. You can walk a little bit more on the bits and you can have that right side a little more available to you. So a little shoulder in right here. Right leg, right leg, right leg. Use your right leg to produce that shoulder in right, not your right rein. And then make sure that left rein is nice. Like, does it feel like a, a pit bull is holding a bone? Is it clamped? So then wiggle it loose and say no. Yeah, good. Are you familiar with Ron Ver at all, Judy? Yes. Okay, so you could do a shoulder in right down this rail, again at the walk. And we're kind of mocking this out for when we're gonna be doing this at trot and canter. So get a nice shoulder and I wanna see this happen off your legs. When I say shoulder and I wanna see your legs move in, okay? And then if you feel like he latches onto that left rein with his pit bull grip, you're gonna convert this shoulder into a little run there, aren't you? Let's see. Yeah. Keep the body and the shoulder in right. And the, the run there is only the counter flexion. So this is where your legs need to be so good about keeping his body there. And then you soft on the left rein, but you keep him in that shoulder in in his body. Exactly, so you're just saying your flexion is independent of what's happening in your body, okay? Yeah. You teach him to be able to isolate the flexion 
regardless of where his body and his legs are. One more time, because you're going to be doing this in the trot and the canter. So always want to make sure you can do it in the walk. So getting your angle. Get your angle. So put his body in that shoulder with your legs. So you sit back, you half fall, you tuck his right hind underneath his body, and you bring his forehand to the right. Don't ask for the ranvere until you have shoulder in, Judy. I never felt that you got your angle of your shoulder in. Get your angle of your shoulder in, and then you can talk about ranvere. He's pooping, which may be hard to ranvere at the same time. And remember, don't let this ranvere be an excuse for you to pull on the left rein. Do you know what I mean by that? Because then you end up, you see people sort of, instead of using this as a tool to get the horse lighter and more free on the left side, they just hang onto it more. And of course, you know what happens when that happens. The horse will get more leany and more reliant on the outside rein. This idea of this run fair is the horse is available and supple even when this outside rein is counter flexing. And yeah, and meanwhile, you've got perfect control over the hind legs, okay? Good. Counter flex, let's see that left flexion come through. Yes, but the right hind should not leave the rail. Do you feel how that hind leg just comes in? So sharpen up, tap him with a whip. Whip, say no. Yes. And flex left again. Good, and then be soft on that left rein. There you go. But keep those hind legs moving, exactly. So in your mind, I want you to think, I cannot get these rein aids through if those hind legs are not active. Okay? Yep. Super. When you're ready, into canter. Same thing down the next long side. And the whip in or out? It depends. Wherever it's best. I'm I'm pretty whatever hind leg is feeling kind of slow, okay. I'd have the whip on that side. Wherever the hind leg is not stepping up actively underneath me. So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna do canter, shoulder in, into Ron Bear. A very advanced movement, but if done properly, it can be very useful. Good for you. Upper body back. Deep seat, keeping him in, not rounder. He is, you'll see on the video, he's extremely round. I don't want him rounder. If anything, I want him up and out more. Good, shoulder in, get your shoulder in. Good, but stay on the track. Okay, this is the trick. So you gotta get back onto the right lead. So your shoulder in aids need to be inside leg at the girth, outside leg back, okay? If your outside leg is back, he knows he's gotta stay on the right lead. And your right seat bone is right. And shoulder in. Up a hill. Don't let him pull down on you. Up a hill. Up and light. Don't let him bear down in your hand either. Bump him up a bit and then give. Super. Super. That's how high I want him. Keep that pole really high, Judy. Now shoulder in. Shoulder in. Pull up. His pull up. Good. Little half up. Good. It's okay. It's okay. No problem. You're doing... Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So find your shoulder in at the wall. See how high he is right there? Leave him there in the canter. Do not put him rounder. Leave him up there. Get your shoulder in. There. Now canter like that. Don't make him rounder than that. He collapses. That's an up and light. Don't let him bury himself down into your hand. Make sure your hand is light that he doesn't use that to take advantage. Now try for your shoulder in, Judy, up and light. Don't let him get strong and leany in your hand. Watch out for Jen. Good, super, Judy. Keep him up and light. One more time. Now, if, if you get a good shoulder in, it'll be harder for him to spook. So get a good shoulder and do not let him look out to the left. Make him look right. Make him look right. Keep his right flexion. Keep him, don't let him spook. Right side, you're gonna concentrate on that. Keep the right side, yes, fabulous. Keep that right side, keep the right side. Keep the right side, don't let him go down. Very nice. Short diagonal with a single flying change. So going, yeah, good. And a single flying change. Slide your left, right, good, good. Now sit up tall, keep him flexed left. Now shoulder in left, sit deep. Funny how Judy's like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And then you're like, okay, now do this very difficult exercise. Does a piece of cake. <laughs> Shoulder in left, sit up tall. Not so much neck bend, Judy. And he's burying himself in front. He's burying himself. He's got to be up and light. Think of those Cavallo puppets. No gravity. No gravity. Yes. 
up and light and effortless. Could you do an eight meter circle right now? Could you? Let's see. Good for you. Wow. You're impressing me. And look at how light that left rein is. Hallelujah. Down the next long side, up and light. Shoulder in. No looking out the window. Sit on that left seat bone. Good. Beautiful. Beautiful. How's the left rein? How's the right rein? Super pet him. Down the next long side. Try for your tiny Ron Bear. Just a little one. Don't let him go down on you though. Don't let him go down. Up and light. Tiny Ron Bear. Just to see if you can. Can you get a little Ron Bear? Yeah. Playfully light. Good. Just check it out. Super. Okay. Short diagonal. Single flying change. Don't let him get lower. Don't let him get longer. Push him up and short and compact. Good, good, good without pulling, not pulling back. Just little aids of compression. Good, straight and a change. And up a hill and then ask yourself, could I do a small circle? If the coast is clear, put in a small circle, but not right there, obviously. Just where the coast is clear. Too many obstacles there. Yeah, up a hill, half halt. Good, up a hill and light. Up a hill, don't let him start to go down. And small turn, tight turn. Control that outside shoulder, good. And up and light, super. Wow, and take a break. Walk and pet him. And that was turning right into that spooky spot there. Amazing. I don't think he was really spooky. I, I think he just lost his attention <laughs> okay. for a minute. Okay, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Suddenly he said, oh my God, where am I? <laughs> okay, very good. Okay, so the only thing I can say is that when he starts to lose his shape, you have to be careful that the aids that you use to get him short and round are not the aids that he uses then to get heavy and low. Yep. So you have to figure out how to get half halts, the body shaping half halts to be quick and light enough yeah. that he doesn't use that as, well, you're making me rounder and deeper. Yeah. You've got to make sure that your half halts are almost like push away fluff half off yeah. like a half off like that yeah. not a half off where he goes rounder and lower all the time into it yeah um think of your half off as an aid that's teeter-tottering him up in front okay. so when you half off you're gonna weight the back of your teeter-totter and tip it down okay so you're trying to get the withers above his croup with these little quick short bumps anything that is sustained too long and presses on him, he will interpret that as the teeter-totter, the weight going into the front of the teeter-totter, and he'll yeah. start to tip down. Yeah. So you've got to keep the weight back, and you've got to bump the front end up, as opposed to start to put the weight forward, and then just start to curl the front end in. Yeah. Yeah, because that's um, what he feels like that he gets stuck either with his back end too far underneath him yeah. or out behind he, or... And because he's short coupled, the <clears throat> teeter-totter is very vulnerable. If you had a longer teeter-totter, you'd have more leverage, more space to work with. But with him, when he loses his balance, he loses the balance big time. And right. the teeter-totter oscillates very quickly from one extreme to the next. So now, as far as your changes go, how confident are you feeling with them? Um, I feel like I can get them, but that they're not necessarily correct. That's kind of how they look. They so, feel a bit haphazard. Yes. So if you don't mind, I'd like to just make them a little more systematic and confident, because I have a feeling with the two of you that you can get a lot pretty quickly. I have a feeling that if we just do some tuning up, you're gonna find that you have quite a repertoire that you didn't realize you had, just based off of what I've seen so far. Okay. So I'd like to just look at those changes with more scrutiny and just refine them a little bit because I have a feeling it wouldn't take much to get them really perfect, really bang on. Okay. okay. I've never, um, the only flying changes I've ever done have been hunter flying changes yeah. and the horse was already schooled. Yeah. Um, I've never taught a horse flying changes before, so, and I've never done.